Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're jumping into the search for the perfect to-do app. Now, many of you may realize this is a misnomer because there really is no perfect tool, but in this video, I'm hoping to give you some essential principles as well as walk you through my current setup using Things 3. So let's get started. To me, finding a to-do app is like searching for the perfect car. You basically just need to get from one destination to the other. You can put as many different bells and whistles, you can look through all the different makes and models, but it's gonna be different for every single person. And ultimately, you're just trying to get from one destination to the other. The whole point of a to-do app is to help enhance your productivity and clear your mind. And so if it's not really doing that, it's not getting you from destination A to B, at least not in a sustainable manner. So hopefully what we're gonna walk through will simplify that search and make it a little bit easier when you're deciding what to use. Lastly, this is highly focused on my personal productivity. While I do use it for work, I generally use other tools like Notion or Trello when I'm at work or collaborating with other people, and I'll probably do a separate video on that. A good to-do app has three essential things. It is easy to capture, it's unopinionated, and it ultimately helps clear your mind. First, let's talk about ease of capture. First and foremost, your to-do app needs to be quick to enter tasks in on the fly. So whether you're at your desk or you're out shopping, whatever it is, and you think of an idea, it needs to be very easy to put it in using Siri or your watch or your phone. It doesn't really matter, but it needs to take as little as time as possible so I don't have to overthink where it needs to go and putting in all the in right information. Second, it needs to be unopinionated. I think the more an app gets out of the way, the more you're going to start to rely on your own systems and you're going to establish your own workflow over time. Now, just as a rough illustration, I've tried to plot out a couple different apps so you get an idea for this framework. On the left, you have unstructured, and this is going to be very comparable to sticky notes. Every individual sticky note is unrelated, it's, there's no lines or dots, you're really just putting pen to paper. And I think this is great for people that don't want to overthink or they already have a system that works for them. On the other hand, you have a highly structured tool, and this is more comparable to a full planner journal where you're outlining your weeks, you're putting your notes in here, you have tasks, maybe you have reflection pages. It's a highly structured outline that you kind of follow on a daily basis. I think this is great for people that are just starting out with a to-do app or they need a lot of guidance to figure out what works. And on this end, you're gonna get the tools like Notion, where it's not necessarily prescriptive with how you use it, but there's so many different ways of working and you can use databases and views and pages that you can add as much structure as needed. Lastly, and probably most importantly, a good to-do app will clear your mind. If it's not doing this, it really doesn't matter how flashy or pretty an app is to use. Your headspace is the number one thing here and your productivity will suffer in the long run if you're constantly tweaking different systems and you're not actually getting work done. This is why I've slowly started to migrate away from Notion because personally, I never stopped tinkering and it just never found a system that worked for me. At the end of the day, you need a system that you can trust. And if you're putting to-dos into the app and you're continuing to think about them, then it shows that they're at some level, you're not trusting your system and eventually you're gonna abandon it. So let's take a look at my setup in Things 3. I do want to mention that Things 3 is not at all a sponsor for the channel. I've just been using this for about a year now, and it's a system that I keep coming back to because it just simply works. So hopefully you'll get some value out of looking at my setup. So if you're not familiar with Things 3, it's known for how minimalist the UI is. Essentially, there's two or three sections. You have some views at the top, like the inbox, today, upcoming, anytime, someday. And then you can split out your tasks into areas and projects. So areas are more like ongoing areas of responsibility, like home maintenance or you know work, something like that. There's not really a deadline in mind, whereas projects are gonna be more specific and generally have end dates. You don't have to have a project inside of an area, they can be standalone. But for the most part, I've separated my entire setup into four simple areas, and then I try and keep the number of projects down to a minimum, so I don't have to look into too many places. 90% of the time, I'm going to be working inside of the today view. I'll filter through new ideas in the inbox throughout the week as I add them. And then I'll also browse individual projects and areas. And then I'll assign that out when I'm planning my day in the morning. So you can see I have four separate areas here. We have my nine to five. We have personal, home, and then side hustles. These are pretty steady areas right now in the current season of my life. Sometimes I'll add a new area if, if a really big project comes along and I need that extra level of hierarchy, but I've tried to keep it really minimal, like I said, just so it's easier to track. 
So let's take a look at some of the areas, starting with my nine to five, I've separated into two or three of the main projects I'm working on currently. Now people, side quests, and admin are really treated as sub areas rather than projects. There's not really an end date in mind, but it's just an extra category I can split tasks into that aren't associated with a specific project. So within projects, you can actually add subheadings, which is great for assigning certain names. And then I basically just put the to-do under each person. So next time I see them, I know what I have to talk to them about. And then side quests is gonna be just added work I can do that's not necessarily required or no one's really asking me, but sometimes they're just extra ideas I have. If I have the time, I'll get to it, but it's not urgent. And then admin's gonna be stuff like scheduling PTO or filling out a performance review, stuff like that. That's not, again, necessarily associated with any specific project. Right now, my personal area is pretty empty because this is gonna be stuff like hygiene or you know scheduling a doctor's appointment, stuff like that, where it kind of comes throughout the year, but it's not really consistent. So I just have a separate category for that. But it could also be entertainment stuff like booking movie tickets or whatever it is. Um, it's just kind of a miscellaneous personal category that is really just for me and doesn't really affect anyone else. Now you can see I have a couple of uh, tags under here like travel or cars, anything like that, that I need to do. Um, but honestly, I don't like using the tags because I try and keep my overall to do's to a minimum. And if I get to a point where I need tags to continue to filter, then I feel like I should start to remove some to do's before I start adding more hierarchy, if that makes sense. Now, as a homeowner, having a dedicated area for this was a game changer because I can separate into supplies, maintenance, and projects. Each of these are, again, individual projects, but being able to have a filtered view for what really needs to happen at the house has been amazing. Rather than just having one big category or tag called home, it's a lot less overwhelming when I can see what's a maintenance thing or more of a fun project, like a DIY thing I'm gonna do this weekend, and I can filter that way. Side hustles is pretty self-explanatory. These are just any other projects like this YouTube channel that I pretty much have an area for, and then the individual side hustle will get its own project. So far, this has been working great for me. I haven't really needed to add any more headings or sub projects, and I can also archive these and complete them at any point. But again, separating this from my nine to five or personal and home stuff is really nice, so stuff doesn't get overlapped too much. So most of the time, I'm really living in this nine to five view. Um, maybe on the weekends, I'll check the home maintenance tasks or personal stuff. But honestly, working about 45, 50 hours a week, I'm constantly in here moving stuff between the projects and building out my today view. So I'm very protective about keeping my work tasks contained in this area. And I'm not too pressed about a personal task creeping up into a wrong project or the wrong area. As long as it's not coming into the work area, then I'm good to go. So going back to some of those principles, one of the main reasons I love Things 3 is how easy it is to enter a new task. So as long as the app is running in the background, I can be anywhere and hit the control space shortcut. That's gonna pull up this quick entry uh, modal. And then I can put in a quick to do and some notes if needed. And then I generally don't assign the dates or the tags or even worry about where it's going. You can see we can set the destination here, like the inbox or the area, but I really just let it default to the inbox. And then, like I said, I'll come back and revisit that throughout the week. This is actually really important to me because I used to spend a lot of time worrying about putting it in the right project or I would default to sending it to my today view. But what ended up happening is that I'd get to the end of the day and I'd have way more to do's than when I started. And generally the priorities I set at the morning weren't even completed and I had to completely rearrange. So rather than letting, you know, passing conversations with colleagues or, you know, your manager overrule your day, I will capture it, but I don't let it immediately take over what I was planning to work on in the moment. Now, while things does kind of force you to either have a project or an area, I don't feel like it's too opinionated about me completing my projects. As you can see, I have things like the admin or the people project, which really isn't a project, it's just an extra category, but it never nags me to complete the date or shows that as like a progress tracker that I'm behind by any means. So while I do see this little pie chart here showing how much progress is left, it's not even a number and there's no notifications kind of prompting me to finish, which is really nice. That's a great segue into how things handles due dates. Essentially, you can have a date, but you can also have a deadline. So the date is more of a suggested kind of start date of when you're gonna start thinking about that task. And if you set it for today and then you don't look at it till two days later, 
There's no red warning or badges or anything like that. It's just gonna continue to stay in your today view. And personally, I just love how forgiving it is so you don't put too much pressure on yourself and feel like you're always gonna be working for your to-do app and not the other way around. Where deadlines come into play is for very time sensitive tasks. So checking into a flight, for example, obviously needs to happen at a specific time and a date. So you could set a date and you could add a reminder so you get that notification, but you might also wanna set a deadline for that day so that you don't forget it. If you go past deadlines, that's when it starts to flag them and notify you because obviously that's very important and that's when you want it to take your attention. I also use the notes section quite a lot for tasks, especially when it's something that's only specific to the task and once it's done, it's not really relevant anymore. It's more fleeting information. And this way I can take some pressure off writing pen and paper. And if I'm getting a link to a reference or whatever it is, it's way easier to copy and paste that into the task notes rather than trying to keep that in a separate place. That way, when I go to start the task, all the information is right there where I need it. And this is a rich text editor, so you can put bulleted lists, you can bold, italicize, you know, paste links, all that stuff, which is very helpful. I don't often use the checklist, which is essentially just subtasks inside of a task. I usually will do it if there's a lot of key steps to a process. That way I know when I'm looking at a task that, hey, the, this actually has five or six sub points that I need it to tackle. It's not just the top heading. I need to make sure I specifically hit these points. Lastly, I just wanna to touch on repeat tasks. So in things, you can either set a recurring task, which would be something like every Monday, or you can set it to be after completion. So it's relative to whenever the last time you checked it off. So if you need to send an email every Friday afternoon at a certain time, you would use something like recurring. But then if you need to change the air filter, you just need to know whenever you last did it. You just need to be every six months, for example. That way, if you forget after a few weeks, and then check it off. It's not gonna be six months from when it was originally due. It would be six months from when you last checked it off. Now, my one minor gripe with this is it's not always clear how you can handle these at first, especially if you're trying to complete it early. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get your system going, but over the last year, um, like I said, I'm a homeowner, so I've had tons of different tasks around the house, like air filters and changing smoke alarm batteries and all that good stuff. Um, now that I've got it in my system, it really has been working quite smoothly and I haven't had to think about it too much. Every now and then a to-do will come in into the home view and it'll remind me if it takes me a few days or even a few weeks, that's okay. As soon as I check it off, then all of the to-dos kind of shift to be relative to that new time. As you can see, things really doesn't have all the normal features you would see in an app like Todoist or Notion. For me, that's just been exactly what I need. I needed something very simple, more on the sticky note side and less on the you know full journal or planner side where there's tons of structure and features like calendars and all that other stuff. I don't work collaboratively with other people and I don't really need to share my to-dos at all. It's really been a perfect little digital garden for keeping all of my tasks in one place and I've really loved it over the last. So hopefully you get something from this workflow. I'd love to hear what tool or workflow you're using. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.